from Canada. Thank you. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you. Sie sie. Gracias from Honduras. Arigatou gozaimasu. Thank you. Thank you from America. Terima kasih. Arigatou gozaimasu. Thank you from Nepal. Arigatou gozaimasu. Thank you very much for your support. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 17th annual Soka University of America Peace Gala. Here we are this evening at the Athenaeum, the site of the very first Peace Gala. How fitting as the Athenaeum was initially built to serve as a conference center to host conversations that promote world peace. I'm Dawn Marie, and as always, it is my honor to be with you as we gather to support SUA's mission of fostering a steady stream of global citizens committed to living contributive lives. Given that half of SOCA students hail from more than 40 countries, the goodness of your generosity this evening will literally be multiplied around the world. Speaking of Soka's global reach, we're excited, excited to welcome friends tuning in from across the USA, Brazil, Guatemala, Ireland, Israel, Singapore, Vietnam, and several other countries this evening. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. And while we miss seeing many familiar faces in the audience with us this evening, we're grateful to you for tuning in remotely. I'm thinking of dear friends such as Matilda Buck, Mickey Singer, Jim and Sheila Peterson, and Judy, and Ch Judy Chow and Steve Lee, the newest pillars of Soka education. And of course, I miss seeing our dear Mary Lou Burke and Alan. I understand Bethany and Ira Moretzky are even hosting a watch party this evening. So shout out to the Moretzkys. So to all of our friends watching remotely and all of our friends here at SOCA tonight, we consider you here in spirit with us on the SUA campus this evening. To participate remotely, go to SOCA2021.ggo.bid. Instructions will appear on the screen for our viewing audience. If you need any assistance, call the helpline number that will appear on screen periodically throughout our live broadcast as well. Also, if you wish to make a gift anonymously this evening, please call the helpline so that your gift is counted, but that your name will not appear on screen other than as anonymous. Again, that number will appear on screen periodically throughout the broadcast. Our in-person guests, 
You get to do it old school. You'll simply raise your paddles the old fashioned way. You won't need your phones. You won't need anything other than one another's encouragement. We have a wonderful program for you this evening and are especially excited to have three time Grammy, Grammy nominated jazz and blues legend Barbara Morrison with us this evening. I'm super excited about that. I had a dream about her last night. That's how excited I am about this. To kick things off, please welcome SUA President, Dr. Ed Fiesel. Good evening. Uh, it is an honor to welcome you tonight to Soka University of America. As Don Marie mentioned, 17 years ago, we held the first gala here at the SUA Athenaeum. It is so great to be back here at the same location for this year's gala, in person for those of you who are present here, and virtually for those of you who are joining us from your home. Last year was a challenging year as we mo moved to remote education due to the COVID pandemic. All students returned to their homes throughout the world and had to take classes online sometimes during the middle of the night. I was so proud and appreciative of our faculty and students for continuing SUA's value-creating educational experience remotely under such difficult circumstances. I am happy to report that all our students are back on campus after our thorough planning and preparations. <laughs> we have successfully been conducting in-person education now for over a month. Our faculty and staff have shared how refreshing it is to have the energy and activity of our students back at SUA. While we, remote last, while we were remote last year, I met individually with every incoming student by Zoom. This year, I again met with every incoming student, but this time in person by small groups. These meetings continue to remind me of the great diversity and spirit of our students nearly half of them coming from outside of the United States, from 40 different countries, as Don Marie mentioned, and all six major population continents represented. All our students, just like our faculty and staff, come to SUA because they want to become global citizens who lead contributive lives. As we celebrate the 20th anniversary of SUA, our entire community is focused on recommitting to the founding principles and spirit upon which our university founder, Daisaku Ikeda, established SUA. Just as he emphasized, we are striving to create a culture, an ethic of global citizenship, based on our courage not to deny our differences, but to learn from them, and based on our compassion to develop an imaginative empathy to feel any person suffering in our community as if it's our own, and based on the wisdom to realize that all our lives are interconnected and that we can take action to help each other overcome our sufferings and challenges. This culture of global citizenship is further enhanced at SUA by a curriculum that fosters a global outlook and a global sense of identity. Key elements of this include mandatory study abroad built into the cost of tuition, an international comparative approach in and across all classes, five interdisciplinary concentrations in international studies, humanities, social and behavioral sciences, environmental studies, and a new life sciences concentration for which we just recently opened our new 90,000 square foot science building. And finally, this is accomplished through a dialogical approach in the classroom and fostering close relationships between our faculty and students. I am happy to share the successful addition last year of a new Center for Race, Ethnicity, and Human Rights that has helped us to work on the important aspects of diversity, equity, and inclusion. We have also added new accelerated master degree programs for our students in collaboration with Claremont Graduate University and the University of San Diego Joan Crock P School. Um, actually, today, two of our donors, Lynn Chang and Chris Chen, are here, and they were the ones who helped us create that initial contact. Thank you so much. 
this academic year, I have also announced we will open the new Soka Institute on Global Solutions. This new institute will focus on external opportunities of collaboration for SUA faculty and student tackling the important global issues confronting humanity and the role of global citizenship education in society. Mr. Ikeda, our founder, has written an annual peace proposal every year to the United Nations since 1983. In 1987, when our predecessor, the Soka University Los Angeles campus was opening, in his peace proposal, Mr. Ikeda called for the establishment of the Institute for Global Solutions. 35 years later, we will realize this dream in May of next year. All of this, all of this is only possible due to our generous supporters like yourselves. And I thank you on behalf of the students, faculty, and staff here at SUA. As most of you know, I have just completed my first year as SUA president. Thank you, thank you. One of the highlights has been the opportunity to meet with donors like yourselves and to thank you for your amazing support of SUA. Through these meetings, I have learned that each one of the donor names we see on campus have an incredible story behind them. One donor I met with a month ago, together with her daughter and son, shared the story of her eldest daughter who graduated from Soka Women's Junior College in Japan. Upon hearing of the opening of SUA, she set her sights on being a member of the first class of SUA. As she prepared to apply while working, she found out she had cancer. She was determined to go to SUA, even if she was delayed and might have to enter the second or third year. While she survived to witness the opening of the new century, she passed away in 2001. A month later, her family made a donation to SUA and had her name placed on our Founders Circle donor wall. When I asked how the family heard about that opportunity and decided to make the donation, the brother replied, it was her wish, her life savings, and her instructions that we do so. She wanted all the money and whatever insurance money to go to support SUA students. Her family, yes. Her family has continued to support SUA as donors over the years. I share this story for two reasons. One, as an example of our donor's spirit to support our students and the belief in their potential to change the world. And second, as an example of our student spirit to come to SUA to develop themselves and make a great contribution to the world. In closing, I wanna thank our incredible alumni who through their lives and careers are showing the benefit of SUA's education in society in every realm of work and activity. Tonight, one of our outstanding alum alumni, Leonard Bogdanoff, will share his experience. I would also like to thank members of our Peace Gala Committee, led by jo Joan May and Missy Fisher, for sharing their time and talents in creating this evening's event. And most of all, please thank you, please thank you. And most of all, I would like to thank all of you, our precious donors, for sharing a passion for our mission and our hope for our students to become world leaders who make a positive difference. Thank you, and please enjoy the gala tonight. Well done. Well done. Thank you, Dr. Fiesel. Next, I'm delighted to introduce an esteemed SUA alum. From the class of 2011, please welcome Lenny Bogdanoff. Hello, everyone. My name is Lenny Bogdanoff, and I am a member of the class of 2011. Though I graduated in 2013, I'll explain that in a few minutes. I met a professor in San Francisco a few years ago who asked me a question I couldn't stop thinking about. While it may not be immediately obvious why, I'd like to present each of you with the same question today. If you had to spend the rest of your life pursuing one of the following three virtues, 
Which would you choose? Your options are fame, wealth, and power. While each of these can be seen to be interrelated, which would be the one that you would feel your life would be most meaningfully spent mastering and achieving? Who would you choose to surround yourself with if you hope to spend your life pursuing this arduous goal? What would you do to continue learning and creating value throughout this process? In presenting this question, I'd like to offer my own experience before, during, and after my time at SUA. I can confidently say, if it wasn't for my opportunity to study at SUA, I would not be who I am today. And for that, I owe a deep debt of gratitude to each of you, the donors of SUA, the staff and faculty, each student and graduate, and SUA founder, Dr. Daisaku Ikeda. I was born... I was born in San Francisco to my mom, Akiko, a first-generation immigrant from Japan, and my dad, Jesse, a jazz musician turned businessman from the East Coast. My parents provided me with an upbringing full of educational experiences, support and opportunities for creative self-expression, and in high school, I graduated most toward computers and film. By the age of 16, I found myself struggling to make good friends, repeatedly being arrested for juvenile misconduct and eventually expelled from high school. During this time, my family was faced with a series of challenging financial obstacles resulting in bankruptcy, which impressed upon me the instability of wealth and challenges of business. As I grew up, my parents made repeated donations toward Soka University of America's founding, which impressed upon me the significance and importance of Soka University of America. Through the encouragement of my parents, family, friends, and alumni, I decided to apply to SUA and eventually attended as a student in the seventh class. Coinciding also with my family's recent bankruptcy, my parents also moved to Southern California, where my mother decided to find a new way to continue her support of SUA, albeit not financially, by taking a job to work in the cafeteria for 13 years alongside students. Although I was accepted and had the incredible support of my parents, I deeply struggled with focusing and learning in the classroom. While I was curious about the world, I was missing an outlet to channel my interests, and due to my inability to complete assignments, I eventually left SUA on academic dismissal after my first two semesters. During this time, an alumnus who knew my situation made continuous efforts to encourage me and challenged me to deepen my own sense of purpose about my life. One year later, after improving my grades at a community college, I was readmitted to SUA, but on unfavorable financial terms because I was ineligible for financial aid or student loans. Fortunately, my aunt offered to become the guarantor of my student loans, allowing me to initially return. Through the support of faculty and my fellow classmates, I was able to double my GPA from the previous year and became eligible for scholarships. It was only because of the generous academic scholarship SUA offered, made possible by donors, that I was able to continue my college degree. My time at SUA was marked with numerous cornerstones that shifted how I thought about myself and the impact I could make in the world. When I returned to SUA, I was given the opportunity to serve on the student government, participate in multi-city volunteer trips, and explore academic topics that extended beyond any specific major or course, such as digital humanities and communication theory. I had countless professors who helped recognize strengths in myself that I had never seen and encouraged me by coming up with opportunities to develop them inside and out of class. For example, though SUA had no courses that provided any trade skills in design or software development, one professor recognized my interest in programming and knowing there were no courses available, offered their research budget to have me make a website for them, which provided me the structure to figure out how to learn the needed skills. 
Through this, I discovered a number of online resources I had previously never seen and began a personal journey to teach myself software development, which kicked off my career pursued over the past decade. Also, throughout my time at SUA, I deeply struggled with writing, which was one of the reasons I had struggled to complete my courses as a freshman. Since my high school education had so many gaps in it, I always felt at odds with writing-related assignments. The heart of the issue was not knowing my unique learning style and not knowing how to effectively structure my thoughts. Through the continued support and mentorship of my peers and professors, my writing ability has become one of my greatest differentiating strengths after SUA. Paper after paper, I got more confident with writing, which culminated in my capstone project on a then obscure online community called Reddit, for which my professor allowed me to deeply research the business of online products, the history of internet communities, and the startup tech industry. Following my capstone, I took my required study abroad in Shanghai, China, where I coincidentally launched my official career in software at a fledgling language learning startup. After study abroad, completing my final required courses and graduating, I settled down in New York, where I was eventually able to work as a software engineer. First, at Condé Nast, where I worked on the New Yorker magazine, then the US federal government, where I was an innovation specialist. I then pursued work at a machine learning focused tech startup and finally began working for Google in a specialized team responsible for serving fonts and typography rendered on billions of devices a day. Last year, I took steps to start my own company, building a video software tool, when I saw the opportunities arising from the shift to remote work due to businesses in COVID-19. This year, I was able to participate in Y Combinator, one of the most prestigious investors in startup companies and raised a $1.5 million seed round from investors and founders of many successful companies. Our company now has five full-time employees headquartered in New York, serving customers ranging from public corporations to numerous startups with billion dollar valuations. The skills to pursue a career in software began at the end of my time at SUA. But the differentiating skills I cultivated as a student, most importantly, learning how to learn and how to write, allowed me to succeed at identifying the most important opportunities to focus on and communicate clearly. But what I value most is that my experience as a student engaging with people from around the world gave me the confidence to meet new people research unknown fields with ease, and even win trust from strangers to collaborate and eventually raise money to start a venture capital-backed business. While starting a company has been a long-time dream, my deeper goal is to contribute directly to the many fields which are not financially rewarded for the value they create in the world. I am determined throughout my business ventures that I can play an instrumental role in supporting Soka University of America's growth for centuries to come, seeing it grow to the likes of Ivy League schools and to become a household name for generations to be associated with fostering humanitarian peacemakers, cultural leaders from around the world, and timeless educators. At the start, I asked the question, if you had to spend the rest of your life pursuing one virtue, wealth, fame, or power, which would you choose? In today's cultural climate, all of these virtues have been synonymous with selfish pursuits and thoughts of grandeur. But I believe in the light of value creation, they can be reframed to maximize their respective good. For example, wealth is not the cultivation of riches for buying more houses or cars, but a way to amass value and direct it to the areas in society that are not financially rewarded for the value they create. Similarly, fame is not about short-term recognition or special privileges, but instead the aspiration to spend your life making contributions to the world which will be valued for generations to come. And in the light of value creation, I believe power is less about political ambition manipulation, trade-offs, and corruption, 
but instead can be harnessed by people with conviction behind their beliefs to fix things they see as wrong in society's broken cultural frameworks, especially for the sake of those who can't fix it for themselves. I am convinced and deeply grateful that it is through my time at SUA that I cultivated this view of the world, where I learned to take my experiences and struggles in life and reframe their meaning to become a tool to motivate myself and be a lifelong learner. I am also proud beyond words to be able to call myself a Soka University of America graduate, where I know with absolute confidence the students and graduates to come will be the instrumental force in tackling humanity's challenges, be it global warming, the inequities related to class, race, or gender, international conflicts, breakthroughs in technology, educational processes, social cohesion, and so much more. Thank you for allowing me to share today. And thank you again to each of you for providing me with the opportunity to call myself a Soka University of America graduate. I can wholeheartedly say, if it was not for the financial support I received through the scholarships made possible by donors like you, I would have neither graduated college nor married my wife, Jihi, who is sitting here today, who is also a member of the class of 2011. I would have never met my business partner, who I happened to meet nine years ago on my study abroad. And I, I would not have had or have the countless lifelong friends who I cherish beyond all else and depend on on a daily basis. Thank you so much. Lenny Bogdanoff, ladies and gentlemen. Well done, Lenny. Isn't it so encouraging to know that students that come through SOCA go out into the world not just interested in doing well, but in doing good? It's, it's amazing that... Uh, that this university even exists, frankly. And on some of the hardest days, uh, when I listen to the troubles of the world, Soka so frequently comes to mind as a beacon of hope for me personally, and I'm sure for you as well. So friends, your contributions to SUA are what enable students like Lenny to benefit from an SUA education. We have just only four live auction lots tonight. Can you believe that? I think this is gonna be the shortest SUA live auction in Peace Gala history. To our friends uh, uh, viewing from home, some of them have sent in proxy bids. So if that's the case, um, we have so SUA staff in the back that will raise their paddles for them. But uh, remember this, three rules of our Soka University live auction. Rule number one, there will be no spousal restraint during our live auction. So if your spouse or significant other is here with you this evening and they want to raise their paddle, the only appropriate response is, go ahead, honey, it's for the students. Now, that's right. Now, if you're flying solo, all the better because you have absolutely no one holding you back, and I expect you to bid with utter abandon. And then the other uh, rule is this, that even if your hand is not the hand that is up in the air when I'm asking for a bid, you still have a very important job to do, and that's to be my SUA cheerleaders. So when I say, where are my cheerleaders? I want to hear you roar for the folks that are bidding. That's right, here we go. All right, my friends, thanks to our friends at South Coast Plaza, we begin this evening with the traditional $5,000 gift certificate to the world famous South Coast Plaza. 
a favorite destination for discriminating shoppers from all over the globe. Your $5,000 gift certificate can re be redeemed at all of South Coast Plaza's 280 stores, hotels, and restaurants. It also includes an exclusive and private access suite pass plus valet parking for an entire year. All right, here we go, my friends, and let me remind you, Christmas and Hanukkah and our holidays are right around the corner. This is a perfect time to start your holiday shopping right here, right now, and support SUA. $5,000 gift certificate. Who's gonna bid? $1,000, $1,000, anybody in the house? I see 1,000 in the back of the house. 1,200 is right there, 14 is right there. I'm gonna come down because these pillars in the Athenaeum make it a little difficult to see all of you. 1,400 is right there, who bid 1,600? 1,600 for SUA, if not, 16 is right there by two of you, 18 in the front, $2,000 back of the house, either one of you, 2,000 right there, 22 is right here. 24 are you bidding, 24 are you bidding? I'm with Joni May at 22, I'm looking for 24. It's your turn again, 2,400. Anybody else in the house? $5,000 gift certificate, do the math. Do I need to send you all to, where's the math department at, here at SUA? $3,000 back of the house, looking for 3,200. 3,200, anybody in the house? 3,200, did you say it? You're the three, did you want to be 32 as well? <clears throat> You're the 3,000. Did you want to be 32 for us, UA? Did, did you want to be 35? Do you want to just keep having your own personal auction? I'll just sit down with you here, and, and we'll, we'll just chat about this. You just tell me, at what point would you like to finish this personal auction that you're having? I'd say 3,500. All right, 3,500 is right there. 3,500. 3,500. Anybody else in the house want to bid 3,800? Give him a round of applause because he was having his own personal auction right there. 3,500, 38 is right there. $4,000 to get back in. 4,200 are you bidding? I'm at 4,000 here. Looking for 42. 42 is that a yes? 42 right there. Go 45. 45 is bid now 48. Would you just cut to the chase and bid $5,000 for this $5,000 gift certificate? <laughs> it's for SUA. And you get all that other stuff thrown in. Free valet parking for a year. All of it. All right, I'm at 4,500, looking for 4,800, going once, going twice. 4,800 is right there. $5,000, 5,000, are you sure? 5,000 is right there, now at 52, 5,200. Don't we think they should do it? 5,200 has been right there. 5,500, are you bidding? Anybody else at 5,500? 50. You know, you could just bid like $10,000 and then everybody else will just go away. You scare them off. I know, right? It's like a bargain. Yeah. Do you want to just like cut to the chase? Cut to the chase about? Well, just like opportunity for some other people. Okay. $5,200. You're looking right, you were at fifty five, right? Fifty five is right there. $5,800. Anybody else in the house? Hurry. Last call. Here it goes. And we have a... Winner, winner, chicken dinner, one, one, five. $5,500, everybody say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I gotta tell you, it feels great to be hopping back up and down off this stage. It's a lot lower than the one in the, uh, in the rec, rec center, right? All right, this next live auction prize is absolutely stunning. It is an elegant handmade kimono crafted from 100% pure silk in vibrant colors with a red silk lining. This exquisite kimono is truly a one of a kind. There is not another one like it as the artist crafts each one individually. And it features traditional elements such as bamboo and the pine tree, symbols that customarily, customarily represent the new year or a fresh start. I want to thank Mrs. Satoko Parsons for this beautiful, beautiful gift. And special thanks to our dear friend, Mickey Singer, for facilitating this exquisite gift. And well, frankly, for all she does 
which was a lot. So thank you so much, Mickey. Alrighty, my friends, this is gorgeous. This is absolutely gorgeous. Who's going to be our first bidder at $5,000? $5,000 in the house. Did you say it? I'm looking for a $5,000 bidder. I've got to get down out of these spotlights. Anybody in the house, somebody say something. Is that a $5,000 bidder? Right there is a $5,000. Looking for $55 is bid right there. Now $6,000. 6, $6,000 bid now $65. $65 is bid now $7,000. $7 bid, $7 bid, $7. It's your turn again. $7 bid, $7 bid, $7. $7,000 is right there now go 75 and 75 are you bidding 75 is yes now bid 8,000 8,000 bid now 85 85 is right there now bid 9 9,000 are you bidding 9 9,000 are you bidding 9 I'm at 85 right over here looking for $9,000 anybody in the house going once 9,000 is right there now 95 9,500 anybody else at 95 hypothetically speaking if they were to bid 95 would you give us ten thousand dollars ten thousand dollars is right there thank you anybody else have anything else they want to say fair warning last call here it goes sold it right there ten thousand dollars Everybody say thank you. And let's uh, congratulate our winner. Winning paddle number is paddle number 176. Outstanding. That is gorgeous. That is absolutely, absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. I think those are our friends, the Lees over there. Is that right? Yeah. All right. Number three, number three, this is so unique. It is a celebrity snowboard, but here's the deal. You don't even have to be into snowboarding to buy this because you would never ride this thing down the slopes because it's autographed by so many famous people that you wouldn't want to muck it up. So this is a unique gift from our very well-connected friend, Chris Chen. Let's hear it for Chris Chen. Those of you who have been uh, at the Peace Gal in the past, remember that Chris has often procured these amazing, like, you know, uh, electric guitars autographed by Carlos Santana and stuff like that. I mean, Chris Chen knows everybody. So this collectible snowboard, while an exceptionally fabricated board, you're going to want to show it off on your wall instead of racing down the slopes, or it would be an amazing, amazing gift for someone. As it's been autographed by some very big names, including Justin Bieber, Snoop Dogg, Jamie Foxx, Lionel Richie, Will I Am, Randy Jackson, Rob Thomas, Wycliffe Jean, Al, Hardin, Al Jardin, Tony Braxton, Anthony Hamilton, Enrique Iglesias, Nicole Richie, Gladys Knight, and Benji Madden. I don't know, I probably missed some. But uh, Chris, Chris Chen, I don't know who you don't know, but this is so fantastic. And we want to thank Chris Chen and his friends Maple Lee and Jenny Chen. You guys always bring so much fun to the gala every year. So thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, here we go. This is truly priceless. Anybody want to start it out at $10,000? Start it out somewhere. Eh, about $3,000. Somebody say something. Anybody in the house? I, this is very unique. Very unique, I understand. Think about it, everybody here must know someone who loves celebrities and would like a very cool gift. This, if you have a business, this could be a great um, sort of a, uh, you know, kind of a promotion thing in your business, you know? Maybe run a contest amongst your employees, somebody gets to win it, very cool. Start me out, $2,000, anybody in the house, 2,000 is right there. Somebody bid 2,200, 2,200. It's gonna sell for $2,000. At this point, you can buy it tonight, make a gift to SUA, and sell it tomorrow for a profit. 2,000 is bid, 2,200. Anybody in the house, going once, going twice. This might very well be the fastest, fastest auction lot in uh, Peace Gala history. And last call, and we have sold it, right? Oh, wait, do we have another bid? Did you say, wait, wait, wait? Wait, 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 did you say yes? Oh, you want salad. Sold it right there, congratulations. Two, one, six, congratulations. All right, <laughs> good for you, good for you, and thank you. All righty, last live auction prize. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Let me tell you, 
Stunning, stunning, stunning. Gentlemen in the house, this is what I call a get out of the doghouse free card. So let me tell you, I consider this next prize a lucky charm for those of you who enjoy games of chance. It is a gorgeous and unique set of delicate teardrop earrings and matching double strand of freshwater pearls. But let me tell you what's incredibly unique about these pieces. Both pieces were created with antique mother of pearl gaming counters handcrafted by artisans in China dating circa 1790 during the Qing Dynasty. The finely carved counters were crafted from oyster shells that were ground flat, shaped, polished, and engraved by hand. And certificates of authenticity are included for both pieces. How about a big thank you to Ron Robertson from the, for this fantastic gift. Thank you so much, Ron Robertson. All right, my friends, here we go. And because this is, these are gaming pieces, I'm feeling that I'm going to start the bid at a unique number. How about $2,222? Who's in at 22? 22. Anybody in the house? 22, 22 is bid. Looking for 2,400. Anybody in the house at 2,400? I've got a 22, 22 bidder. Anybody else at 2,400? 24 is bid. 2,600. 2,600 is bid. And now bid 2,800. 2,800. 2,800 is bid. 3,000 is bid. 32. Are you bidding those 32? 35 is bid and now 38. And 38. And 38. I'm over there at 35. Now, we have two bidders at the same table. Want to make sure that we're not busting up a friendship here. 35 is bid. 38 is bid. 4,000 to you. 42. 45. 45. 45. I want you to watch what's going on over here. 45. 48. 5,000. 52. 55. 58. 6,000. 62. 65. 68. 7,000. 72. 75. 78. 8,000. 82. 85. 88. 9,000, 92, 95, 98, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000 is bid. 10, 5, 10, 5, 10, 5. It's one of a kind. There, you'll never see another one like it. 10,000, 500 dollars. Hurry and last call. I'll loan you the 500 bucks. 10, 5 is bid. Now, but 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11. Anybody else want to join this party? How do you think the ladies are doing so far? Woo! 10,500, hurry, last call. All right, uh, so it occurs to me. You guys could buy this together. You could then share it. What do you think? We're going to say sold right here. $10,500, 216. We're going to say a great big thank you to 259. Everybody say thank you. And I want you to know that our winner is a Soka alum. How about that? How about that? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Outstanding. All right, my friends. You know, SUA has a proud and unique heritage of fostering a steady stream of global citizens. But frankly, what they do, what they do would not be possible without all of you. I want to thank everyone that contributed auction prizes for our live auction. I want to thank everyone who raised their hands to place a bid. And I want to congratulate one more time all of our live auction winners. Thank you all so very, very much. We have a wonderful message for you from the students. They couldn't be here, but as you enjoy this next course of your meal, please take a look at the screens. The mission of Soka University of America is to foster a steady stream of, of global, global citizens. citizens. Committed to living a contributive life. With the wisdom to perceive 
the interconnectedness of all life and living. The courage not to fear or deny difference, but to respect and strive to understand people of different cultures and, and to, to grow, grow from, from encounters, encounters with, with them. The compassion to maintain an imaginative empathy that reaches beyond one's immediate surroundings and, and extends to those suffering in distant places. places. I was born in Sudan. In 1999, we had to flee to Egypt because the Muslims started burning the Christians. We're Catholic, so they had to basically leave their property and everything once everything started getting really bad. We moved to Egypt and lived there as refugees. Being black, um, they were pretty racist towards everyone, anyone with uh, dark colored skin. One thing that I really remember vividly is whenever I'm like walking down the street, they'd be like, oh, hey, go back to Africa, and you just go like, pause, what? Growing up was like being on the defense. I loved the community at Soka. It was amazing, open, um, so I can actually sit and just be myself with the people around me. Soka has a lot of kids from different countries and really smart kids. If you really can just talk to the other person who doesn't look the same as you, not the same race, not from the same country, as long as you just start a dialogue, start talking to them, you automatically see like you have a lot of things in common already. Growing up, obviously, I looked at the world as like, oh, I'm confined to this small space, but Soka made this huge globe to the earth in the palm of my hands. Growing up, I never had a home. Going to Soka is just like basically being home. Many universities have traditional curriculums where are really Western-centered, but uh, we specifically designed our curriculum to be a, a comparative approach, and so to compare across East and West, also deal with North-South. Given the diversity of the students, I have to make sure that what I'm teaching is relevant to all of them. I've taught at several places, and I haven't experienced anything like this. Growing up, I went to high school in Phelan, which is a really small desert town. From 7th grade to 12th grade, it was the same group of kids. I don't really remember learning much about worldviews in high school, and I feel like different perspectives weren't really discussed among my friend group because we all had very similar beliefs. My experiences at Soka have really just opened my eyes to so many perspectives that I didn't even know existed. My emphasis at Soka is environmental studies, and a lot of what I've been learning is how the relationships that people have with each other and the relationships that people have with the environment are all interconnected. For the past three years, I've been on the track in the cross-country teams. I personally tend to work better in smaller environments and letting that have a ripple effect. It's really easy to get caught up in like, well, we need to change the world, but I think some of the biggest differences and some of the greatest change comes from making those personal relationships in the places that you are. Today's education somehow prepares your, uh, the students only to get a job. But I believe that education is intended to make you a better human being. You need to have the empathy and the compassion and the knowledge to know what is happening to a bigger human family. One of the reasons why I decided to come to Soka is to continue with the fight that my grandfather started. He fought at the Spanish Civil War for democracy and equality. I have the responsibility and it's also a decision that I made in my life to continue the fight that he started. Soka University of America students, we are required to study abroad. I spent four months in Dakar, Senegal, and at the beginning it was very hard. The cultural differences were not that big that it was really difficult to find something in common. I remember one of the encouragements I received from one of the donors in the Peace Gala last year. They told me, I have hope in you. You're gonna be the future leaders of this society. And when I remember that, I told myself, everybody believes in me. SUA told me to believe in myself and my capacity. So with that in mind, I went out to reach the people. I could, for the first time, feel this compassion in me. For me, being a global citizen means 
that when you see a difference, when you see other people suffering, you don't become a spectator. Soka University of America gave me the tools to speak up and fight for human rights, democracy, equality. And after being four years here, I can say that Soka made me a better person. Yes, my friends, that is what it's all about. Big round of applause for our students. Friends, I want to share a quick story with you. Several years ago, there was a little girl who dreamed of becoming a very famous dancer. She'd spend her afternoons on the street corner near her apartment dancing for nickels, which she'd proudly bring home to her mom as proof that her dream could come true. A few years later, her mother sadly died and the little girl was sent to a boarding school. This is a true story. One night, the, or the little girl mustered the courage to run away from the boarding school and showed up for open mic night at the Apollo Theater in New York City. There was only one problem. The act just before her, they were also dancers, the Edwards sisters, and they brought the house down. So as our little girl took her place on the stage, she was paralyzed with fear, paralyzed with fear. She could not move her feet, and the audience booed for her. They booed as this little 17-year-old girl stood on stage, and she didn't know what to do. But in the front row, there was one woman that she made eye contact with that was not booing, but simply gave the girl a nod. And in that moment, that little girl, that 17-year-old girl, opened her mouth and began to sing. And the world fell in love with Ella Fitzgerald. True story. You, my friends, are the nod in the front row for so many of our SUA students. If we, as adults, sometimes think the world is a tough place to be, imagine growing up in it and not feeling discouraged or getting off track. My friends, you are the nod. Thank you for being the nod for our SUA students. Thank you for the encouragement that your support provides for them. Now, in a moment, I'm going to ask you to continue your support of our SUA Student Scholarship Fund. Continue to be the nod. Be the nod for a student tonight. I'm going to invite you to make a gift at one of several levels either at $20,000, but of course, don't let me hold you back. If you want to pledge more, have at it. But I'm going to invite you to make a gift at $20,000 or at $10,000 or at $5,000 or $2,500 or $1,000. The important thing, my friends, is if everyone in the room tonight and everyone watching at home tonight makes a gift, our SUA students, no promising student will be turned away for lack of financial resources. So who will be the first person to be the nod in the room tonight and put their hand in the air and make a pledge of $20,000 or above? And I know it's a lot to ask, but on behalf of our SUA students, I am not too proud to ask anybody at $20,000 right here, right now in the house at $20,000 before we jump to our next level, which is $10,000. Anybody at the $10,000 level here tonight, my friends, that's less than $1,000 a month. Such an important contribution. Such an important contribution for our SUA scholarship fund. Anyone in the house, shh, 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 shh. anyone in the house willing to be the nod for a student tonight with a gift at the $5,000 level? Anyone in the house at $5,000? Yes. Yes, yes. All right, Linda, coming your way, darling. 
I see a $5,000 gift right here. Sorry, I can't see you through the spotlights. 261, everybody say thank you. Who would like to join him with a gift of $5,000? Anybody else in the house? You did a great job there, Lenny. Lewis, thank you so much. 199, thank you, Lewis. Anyone else? At Thank you, Ed Fiesel, $5,000, one, three, two, thank you. President Ed Fiesel, who else will join them? One more $5,000 gift will get us to $20,000. One more gift at $5,000. And I see a hand, is that a hand, is that a hand, Why, sir? Next one, I see, she's fishing for her paddle. Don't worry about it, right here, one, three, zero, everybody say thank you, Wendy, thank you, Wendy. Wendy just got us to $20,000. Anybody else in the house at $5,000 before we jump to our next level, which is $2,500, and you wanna be first, Steve? $2,500, one, eight, two, thank you, Steve. One, zero, two, thank you so much. One, one, two, thank you, who else? Who else? Thank you, Professor. Who else at 112? 152 one, at 2500. Thank you. Who else at $2,500? That's about 200 bucks a month, my friends. 152, we got you. Thank you so much. We got you. We got you. We got you, 152. We got you. Oh, it's 154. Thank you. Thank you. Boy, these lights. It was 154, not 152. Anybody else at $2,500? Two, uh, 259, thank you. 213, thank you. 216, thank you. That is another gift from our alum who were fiercely bidding on our Mother of Pearl jewelry set, by the way. Who else at $2,500, my friends? Anybody else at $2,500? Before we jump to the next level, which is $1,000. $1,000 pledges. Here we go. I'll start on this side of the room. Anybody at $1,000 for our SUA scholarship fund? $1,000. One, three, three, thank you. Anyone else at $1,000? One, three, one, thank you. Who else at $1,000? Anybody else at $1,000? Anybody else? All right, now, at the $500 level, shh, 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 shh. At the, shh, 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 shh. At the $500, oh, one, eight, three, thank you so much for your gift of $1,000. What, are you at 1000 still? 500? Okay, hang on just a second before we get to 500. Here's what I want to tell you about the $500 level. We have a special, special surprise for you. At the $500 level, we have a matching challenge tonight. New York comedian and stock market wizard Michael Young Cho is going to match every paddle at $500 up to $10,000. That means he's going to match the first 20 paddles in the house. Here we go. $500 paddles. Here we go. And I'm looking for a paddle right there. 187. Thank you. 134. Thank you. 163. Thank you. 200. Thank you. Who else at $500? 144. Thank you. Who else said $500? 229, thank you. 202, thank you. 147, my thanks to you. 186, thank you. 166, thank you. 261, thank you. 139, thank you. 164, thank you. 176, thank you. How about a big thank you to Michael Young Cho's turning every one of those 500s into a thousand. 229, thank you. Anybody else at $500? Hold it right, hold it still. 239, thank you. 246, thank you. Who else would like to join them at $500, ladies and gentlemen? Anybody in the house? All right, $250 paddles. Here we go. Anybody at 250? Anybody at 250, this side of the house, that side of the house. How about a great big thank you to everyone who's just made a pledge to our SUA scholarship fund. Now, my friends, supporting SUA students in their quest to bring peace into the world. If you've enjoyed our time together as much as I have, please share tonight's broadcast with others. You'll receive a link in the coming days. 
Meanwhile, thank you for being here either in person or tuning in virtually. Your generosity tonight will ensure the prosperity of SUA's student scholarship program and the power of your goodness will be multiplied around the world. We look forward to seeing you again next year. Save the date, Saturday, October 8th, 2022. Meanwhile, we wish you abundant health and prosperity. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm happy to report that we have raised $880,000 for the scholarship fund tonight. Everybody say thank you. Thank you and good night to our viewing audience.